ADHD family. I'm Yakini with ADHD Love. Welcome to another episode of ADHD Love Parent Talk. So today we're going to do something a little different. I am so excited because Camden decided that she she actually offered to interview me for my platform. So she's going to take control and be the interviewer and I am going to be the interviewee and she's just going to ask me questions and we're just going to have a lot of fun. So Camden, welcome and thank you. Thank you so much for doing this. Awesome. I'm so glad that we get to do this. I'm so glad you said yes, because you have done so much good to spread awareness and help so many people, but it's hard to like take the bits and pieces of what we learn about you and, you know, know your full picture. So this is, this is going to give us the opportunity to get to know you even better. So I'm excited selfishly, but especially for your audience to get to know you even more. Um, you're just so incredible and so inspiring and really happy to, I'm really happy to have you on your show. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> so so I'm just gonna, you know, step into your role here, and I'd love you to introduce yourself as though we've never met. Tell us a little bit about your background. Sure. So I am Yakini, and I am a single mom to two wonderful children. I have right now a nine-year-old um, who's about to be ten. I cannot believe it. Time goes by so fast. And he was diagnosed with um, the hyperactivity impulsive type for ADHD. And then my daughter, who is 11, who's going to be 12 next week, she was diagnosed with the inattentive type. And I actually learned about ADHD through going through their journey. So, you know, as a parent of ADHD children, that's how I became aware of ADHD. But many years later, I realized that I saw myself in them. And I said, you know what, there's some similarities here. Let me get myself tested. So I was also diagnosed with ADHD at 45. So last year, wow. and I was diagnosed with, um, I wasn't diagnosed with a particular type, but I was diagnosed with comorbidity with um, anxiety and depression. And so for me, it was just like a, a, a aha moment. So I'm not one of the people that said, you know, man, if I had known many years ago, you know, I could have done things differently. For me, it was like finally connecting the dots. This yeah. is why I was doing the things that I did. And it actually just made me feel so much better, just made yeah. perfect sense. So, um, and then I created ADHD Love Platform. And the reason why I created ADHD Love is because as I was going through my journey with my children, I felt like I was by myself. I didn't understand the resources. I didn't have a community at that time. And I felt like I was just walking the road alone. And so the bottom line is I just didn't want other parents, whether they had ADHD themselves or whether they have children with ADHD, I didn't want them to walk the road alone. You're amazing. I love that. It's so, it's so relatable. <laughs> I think there's so many parents on here that feel that exact same way. And so many of us learned about ourselves through our kids too. Yeah. And, um, you know, I think every, every story is valid, right? Every experience is valid. Uh, but I personally relate to yours a great deal of this, of this, like, Oh, finally there's reasons behind, you know, the last 45 years of my life. Like finally things are making sense. Um, I'm curious, why did you decide that you wanted to seek a diagnosis? Was it because of the anxiety and the depression? And then this came secondary or tell us a little bit about that. Really, it was to connect the dots, first of all, with my children. One of the things that I have heard that, you know, ADHD is genetic. So mm. um, I wanted to get tested to see if I was, uh, I'm not going to say part of the problem because we're never part of the problem, right? But I just wanted yeah. to see if there was some connection between my children and I. Now, the other thing is that um, what was really cool is once I got diagnosed, I was able to even tell them, hey, your mom understands and... Mm -hmm. I am going through a lot of the similar things that you are going through now, and this is how I've handled it. So it was being able to connect to my children if I was diagnosed that way. Um, so really it was just that, and I just simply wanted to know was why I did the things that I did, you know, falling asleep in class, struggling in school, struggling with relationships and friendships. Um, I mean, there were so many things that connected to ADHD was it because of ADHD? Because mm -hmm. again, I had never heard of ADHD growing up. So I yeah. just wanted to know if that was the reason why I was struggling as I was growing up. And so, like I said, once I got that diagnosis, it just put everything into place. 
Wow. I love that. Last night I was on a, I was on a call with a whole bunch of other parents that have children with ADHD. It's like this family parenting, wait, sorry, parenting coaching call. Uh And so many of them were just feeling so lost. Um, I mean, the, the coaching had helped them a great deal, but I just love that you're saying like, now you're able to relate with them on this very personal level. Um, I, I'm curious, do you feel like having three ADHD years in your home is really difficult or do you feel like going through that process together is advantageous? Uh, I don't think there's a right or wrong answer. I just, I'm really curious your experience in that. Um, it's absolutely a struggle. I mean, I'm not going to <laughs> sugarcoat it yeah. at all, right? I mean, <laughs> so not only do you have eight, three ADHD, three ADHDers, you have three different personalities, and yeah. you have two children who are <laughs> very strong-willed on top of that and are A personalities. So, you know, wow. even though I am the adult, sometimes they think that they are the leader, you know? <laughs> And they're really close in age, right? Oh, yeah. They're two years apart and they're yeah. two weeks apart. So they're the same sign of you. Believe uh-huh. not, <laughs> the energy is just. It's just like, <laughs> yeah, it's just constant and consistent. And so, um, and for me, because of what I am dealing with, so I am more of the, um, I am very sensitive noise, for example, right? So mm-hmm. the energy overwhelms me. And so Hmm. have to balance what I am experiencing with children that are very excited, you know, very happy and, you know, they scream to the top of their lungs and happiness. (laughs) Yeah. So that can overwhelming sometimes. Right. And so, um, so just trying to be able to learn about myself and do some things differently. Now, one of the things I've shared with people in the past is I was truly blessed with parents who got me. So mm. even though we did not have a diagnosis, they understood what I needed. So ironically, um, a lot of the things that I have done and put in place, or they have put in place, happen to be things that ADHDers need. And so I was very beautiful. blessed with that. But learning how to interact with my children, obviously that there's no, there's no instructions for that, right? You know, how do ADHD people act with other ADHD people, um, especially if they're your children? So that has really just learning about myself even more, learning about them, meeting where, you know, them where they are, um, Mm -hmm. all of that I have learned through this journey. And honestly, I mean, once I understood what ADHD meant, I was able to understand their struggles, help them through their struggles, um, and I still help them through their struggles, but I also was able to see the brilliant side of them, right? They're yeah. so smart and so creative and so funny, and all of that finally stood out even more once I was able to connect all of the dots. So it's just wow. like, my kids are amazing, right? It's like, When I first started this journey, I was so flustered. I was crying all the time, emotional. What's going on? Why couldn't I help them? What am I doing wrong? Now I'm now it's just totally different. It's like I get you and you're so much fun and let's play a game and let's do this. And I get it takes, you know, five hours to get out the door. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, I still get frustrated sometimes, but yeah, I get it. I get it. And that's what makes a huge difference. Wow, that's incredible. And and all doing that as a single mom, as a single mom. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, that, that is a huge, huge thing. I know for me, even able to have that escape every so often of like, okay, you take the kids and I'm going to go breathe, especially when the noise gets too loud and everything. Um, I mean, that's so admirable in so many ways that you found a way to balance. I actually just got a DM the other day and they're like, I just can't handle the noise. Like, I really can't. What do you do? And I was like, I literally bought noise canceling headphones. I don't know what you do, but (laughs) you find ways, right? Yeah, you do. Amazing. Okay. That's amazing. Well, tell me um, a little bit about other adults that might be feeling the same way you are, where maybe their kids have been diagnosed or they might be thinking that they might have ADHD, what would you suggest for them? Would you suggest them going to get a diagnosis? So everybody has a very different opinion about whether you should get a diagnosis or not. I, for me, it was yes, 
go ahead and move forward and get the diagnosis. And the reason is, um, yes, there are some emotional roller coasters that you may go through as you are, once you get the diagnosis or once your children get the diagnosis. And when I say roller coaster, some people experience the shame of why in a world, like what did I do wrong that my children yeah. have ADHD, right? Um, yeah. Some people struggle with the school systems because their children are going through an emotional breakdown and the kids or the, the teachers or staff do not know how to handle it. I mean, yes, there are some emotional roller coasters that can go with the diagnosis, but once you have it, what I realized, once I had the diagnosis, there were so many advantages of yeah. getting the attention and support that they needed by having the diagnosis. So being able to set up a plan with the school um, was because he had his diagnosis. Being accepted into a um, diagnosis only type camps, you know, they, they work every oh, year. Yeah. My children go to a camp that deals with different diagnoses and one of them being ADHD. And the only reason my daughter got in, she wasn't diagnosed at the time, but the only reason she got in was because my son was in. Wow. So, um, school systems, um, like I said, there's a lot of school systems that have the support. Yes, you have to find the right school system because I had to move school systems, but there yeah. are school systems out there that have the support. Um, and then college, there are also opportunities at college that can give you certain supports with the diagnosis. So I get it that you don't feel, you know, you don't want to have that label for your children, but there are so many advantages of having the diagnosis, so many things you can do with it. So for me, it was a better step in the direction to get them the diagnosis. That That's a lot of doors that opened mm -hmm. that you just mentioned. I mean, a ton. Um, I'm a little bit curious about when you say, you know, um, school districts or schools with a variety of supports, will you just give us a little insight to what kind of supports there are um, for kids? Because I know a lot of people are like, they say you get a 504, they say do this, that, and the other, but we don't really know how to advocate for that. Um, maybe just a couple of those that could give us some insight. Yeah. So for, um, so yeah, so one support system is having a 504 or an IEP. And I need, so the 504 just gives you a really a basic outline to support the child. So for example, if they need to take a test, in a more quieter space, right? So yeah. they would put that particular child in a quieter space so they can focus. So there's certain things that you can do with a 504. And I was actually just talking to a wonderful lady about it on one of my previous videos. And she was saying that if you do it right, you can actually get a pretty robust 504. So awesome. it's, you know, some people think it's, I won't say it's fluff, but it's just less than an IEP. But mm -hmm. to her pers or from her perspective, if you work with the school district, you can really do a lot of good things with the 504. Now, awesome. for the IEP, I needed something a little bit more detailed where I needed him to sit down on a daily basis with a specialist. And so he works with someone every morning that will help him basically get his energy ready for school. So when I say get his energy, they will use the, um, the zones of regulation, which is the mm -hmm. you know, blue, yep. green, red, yellow zones. So he will say, for example, what zone he's in. So if he says he's in a yellow zone, they will work through proper exercises to get him into a, uh, the green zone. Um, if he's in a really angry mood, they may do yoga to help him mm -hmm. calm down his energy to help them get into the green zone. That's so amazing. that was one thing that he needed. He needed that 101. And if he had some type of um, uh, like an emotional situation in school, that specialist would come into the classroom to you know, get him out of the classroom. And then they walk around the halls with him you know, until he calms down and then would we'll talk through it with him, you know, wow. what was going on. So. There's a lot of one-on-one, -on -one, and then they also do some group work as they get older and are more, how do you say, they've been on the IEP for a while and they're more mm -hmm. successful. 
Um, they'll start putting them with other kids so they can build relationships. They can even be almost like the, like the, like the, it's like the mentor, right? Yeah. So he's learned all of these things. So now he can teach some other. Show you how. <laughs> yeah. Like the model. He's like the model, right? Totally. And so it's just a lot of advantages. So those are just a couple examples. So like our school offers a sensory room. So in the afternoons, um, he's assigned to the sensory room and he can go in and, you know, there's like, you know, he can roll over the, you know, on the floor or play <laughs> with certain types yeah. of balls or um, so you can pick like three sensory activities to do just to, you know, keep oh them gosh. going. So they I need think, a sensory room. Oh, <laughs> I need a sensory room. <laughs> that baby is awesome. I walked in there and I'm thinking, can I just come sometimes, you know, on lunch break? <laughs> so, yeah. So there's just a lot of advantages um, that you can have with either either program. So it just really depends on what your child needs. And one of the things that she brought up is you have to understand the first thing before you ask and advocate or start the conversation is what do you think your child needs? And once mm. you have an understanding, you know, put evidence around it. So um, for example, you, and I actually did all of this, which I didn't even realize that was a thing, but um, you know, when he had trouble in the daycare systems, I had write-ups from that and the struggles that he had in kindergarten. So we had all of this paperwork saying he needs support. How can we do this for him? And so, um, so yeah, it's just been, it's just been a wonderful journey for him. And I'm telling you, the confidence level has increased tremendously since he's been part of this. Oh my gosh, it sounds amazing. And it gives me hope that, you know, all, all over the world and that, that people will shift. I mean, if one school is doing it, then there might be others. So I am like now really curious <laughs> about our school district. <laughs> What's out there that I don't know? Do they have sensory rooms? <laughs> okay. So then I'm really curious about adults getting diagnosed with ADHD and seeking that diagnosis, for example, at 45 years old, we're not in school. We're not in college. Um, you know, what, what advantage would you say? I mean, we talked a little bit about it. Do you still feel like that that diagnosis open door opens doors even for adults? It can. Um, there's a lot of advantages, I mean, of having the diagnosis as an adult. One, you're able to really process the direction that you need to go to make your days a little bit smoother. So, mm -hmm. for example, you know, once I understood my diagnosis of anxiety and depression, I knew that, okay, when I go see, for example, my therapist, these are the mm -hmm. things that we need to work on. So I was able to get more specific in saying, instead of having this general idea of how I'm feeling, what I'm going through, we were actually able to be specific about those particular situations, right? Wow, and so that yeah. was very helpful for me because I wanted to get help. I wanted to be better, a better person. Um, but I didn't know all of, I, I just knew in general what was going on with me, but I didn't know why it was going on with me. So once I understood the why, then we were able to work out a more detailed plan. So that was very helpful. That's for great. Me. So, and then, I mean, as an adult, I mean, there are still some advantages. Some people still go to school, right? So, yeah. um, there are some things that you can, you know, for college, for example, there are some um, support systems that they do have in place at colleges that you just have to, you look it up before you attend the college to see what they do. For example, test taking time. It may be um, where other people get two hours, you may get three, you know, so there yeah, are yeah. other opportunities that you can use as an adult. Um, work, there are some jobs that consider the fact that you are ADHD and you might need a little bit more, how do I say, um, not direction, but again, support. I mean, it's just, you yeah, might yeah, be able to, yeah. right. Yeah. So, uh, so for example, your timeline, um, if they know they need it due by X date, they may set meetings with you on a periodic basis just to help you, or you as an adult may mm -hmm. set periodic time frames with them, but you let them know why, Hey, yeah, you know, yeah. this is what's going on with me. And for me to stay on task, these are the things that I need to do. Can you help me out with that? So I'm going to set, you know, a periodic time so that way I can stay on track. So being able to have that open conversation and it doesn't mean that you're having somebody cuddle or coddle you or watch over you because you yeah, still want to yeah. be independent, but allowing people to realize, like my boss knows. So I told my boss 
okay? I was diagnosed with ADHD. This is what it means for me. Um, it doesn't mean I'm going to do less work. You know, I'm, yeah, I still got yeah. 50 tabs open and I get my things done. <laughs> it's just that now I may be setting more periodic meetings with you to make sure I get my tasks done. And so being able to have that open conversation. Now, everybody doesn't feel that way. And I completely understand it. Everybody doesn't feel like they can be open with their, um, their company. But I'm, again, blessed to be able to be open with mine. And um, so it's just been a huge advantage since I had gotten the diagnosis. Now, do you need it? Um, I was talking to a lady who says that she doesn't know if she will get diagnosed or not, but she is struggling with certain things. And I said that if you do not happen to get diagnosed, it doesn't mean you can't use some of the techniques to make right, things right. a bit smoother in your life, right? And so there's a lot of things, like I said, that I've done in the last 45 years that were taught by my parents that have truly helped me. I would not be here today if it wasn't for them. And so, um, so yes, there's still a lot of things that you can do, but I have just seen so many more advantages having the diagnosis, even as an adult. That's so great. And I, I think it's, starting the sub subject of our professions and our jobs too, it's not necessarily even that you have to say that you have ADHD, but like you were saying, if you're working with your therapist, you're working with somebody else or you're advocating for yourself. Now you can say, I learned that I work better when I have right. periodic <laughs> reviews and right. you know that you want me to show up in my very best way. Right? right. So I think that that is genius. I think it's so important. You just hit it right on the money. So amazing. Um, I'd like to backtrack just for a second before we talk a little bit more about ADHD love. And I really am curious about how you balance this life as a single mom. Do you have any um, recommendations or, um, you know, suggestions to other single parents that might be out there trying to balance ADHD and an ADHD family? Yeah, it's, um, I, I have ups and downs, <laughs> right? I As mean, we all do. Yeah, exactly. I mean, everybody is going to feel it, whether they're single or married. And um, I have my setup, my situation is set up where my children are actually visiting their dad every other weekend. So that is mommy time during those Good. weekends. I take so you know, important. Full, full advantage of those weekends. And yes, I know my relaxation. I try to veg sometimes and I may veg as I'm doing certain things, but you know, or watching Netflix and yeah. you know, cooking on Instagram. Um, but it's still my time and that's a time for me to just reset, relax, and just, um, you know, be ready for them to come back on Sunday. Right. Mm -hmm. And so how do I handle it? So there's a couple of things that I do. I tried something new this year. Every year I'm trying something different because I, first of all, that's just how my brain works. I'm yeah, it's ADHD different. and it's motherhood. So yeah, <laughs> yeah you gotta always change it up. It, right? <laughs> so this year, what I'm trying is that, um, because I actually put a couple extra things on my plate this year. So not only do I have ADHD love, I've started a real estate business with my mom. And of course I have my full-time wow. job and then I have my children's activities. And, um, <sighs> and so, so what I've done is I put together a detailed schedule for me. So Monday through Friday, I have a schedule and it's just a checklist, something that I just keep on the computer. And I say, okay, for example, um, on Wednesday, I need to put out my ADHD love parent talk. Um, and on Thursday, I need to do this. So I kind of outline what the week needs to be. Um, I put some things that I have to do. And then in the middle of that, I put some things that I would like to do. So awesome. if I don't get to the things I would like to do, it's okay. Right. So it's, it's like there. priorities. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And I don't feel bad about it. You know, like I need to read a book. Right. So I put 20 minutes. I'm when it comes to book reading, I'm great with it. And I would say even with book listening. So even <laughs> <laughs> I have been on a fort, I was listening to a 48 hour book. For, and I'm still only probably about 12 hours in. Mm -hmm. And um, I think probably it's about four years old. I mean, I'm just, uh -huh. <laughs> I am a little horrible. Bit out of time. I'm just horrible <laughs> with them. But the point is, is that I put that in my schedule. So then if I miss certain things, I won't feel bad about it. And I, mm -hmm. those things that I have to do, I get done. Um, so that's kind of my new things this year is just putting a plan together to try to keep me on track. And that includes, you know, I need to make sure that this is the time for my children, right? So this is right. children's time and this is 
um, you know, doing chores time. And so I, I mean, I, my schedule is really detailed just to make okay, sure. Okay. So I'm so curious, have you always been like that? Have you always been scheduled out like that? Or is that something you've developed post diagnosis? No, I'm, I, that's always been part of me, but not because of me. Okay. <laughs> People are going to get sick of me saying this, but <laughs> oh. my dad, <laughs> okay. he is the one that taught me how to write everything down into a okay. schedule. Because again, he knew I was all over the place and yeah. I would forget things. I would forget times. And he says, you need to get a planner. And that was the time of the planners, right? And mm -hmm. you need to get a planner and you need to write it down. So I kept a planner for a very long time. And now I put it in my computer and it beeps, right? So that's perfect. I even use alarms like, okay. Yeah, so yeah. like, for example, our meeting today is 11 o'clock Eastern time, right? right. And my alarm went off at 1055. <laughs> so, <laughs> there you go. So that way I can be here right on time. So yeah, I even yeah. doubled, I, I say double duty it where I have my schedule and the things that are not usually part of my day. Like this is, even though I um, interview people and talk to people every once in a while during the day, it's not a usual part of my mm -hmm. day. Yeah. I try to make sure that I schedule or I schedule it and then I put an alarm on top of that. So, but yes, I've, I've been like that always. Okay. But I love this because so many of us with ADHD, we think I'm only one way. We kind of have a rigid way of thinking. And I think what you found is practice and repetition yeah. and adjustment. You're not still using a paper Franklin planner, you know, right. you've now adjusted it with your lifestyle, with technology to make sense for your life. And I think if we embrace more of that flexibility and this neuroplasticity that we can change, that there are ways that we can find organization. You don't have like every single hour scheduled out. Like you said, you have found a way that by chunking, you've chunked your priorities and your likes, like that's all very ADHD friendly. And so I think it gives us great hope to know that we also can find ways to improve, that we're not just going to be one way the rest of our life, uh, and that we don't have to be one certain kinds of organized. We can find a kind of organized that works for us in our life. So that's so awesome. I love that. Okay, let's, let's dive in a little bit more as we're ending here. Tell us a little bit more detail about ADHD Love um, and how you know, you're, you're helping support other parents with ADHD. Um, and is there any other resources that we can, um, glean from that you that you're aware of? <laughs> so, um, as far as ADHD love, so my goal is to, to support, like I said, parents with children that have ADHD, parents that have ADHD with children that have ADHD, and then, um, adults that have ADHD. So the idea is to be a one-stop shop. Um, my goal is to have all information in one place um, through interviews because I interview other parents. So I want to have tips and tricks from their perspective. Mm -hmm. And then I also interview other adults um, because they were somebody's child at one point. So them growing into adult and sharing some of their experiences as they've grown up can definitely yeah. be helpful to parents. And then I also talk to experts. So um, doctors and educators and coaches, anyone that has worked with children and adults with ADHD. And so we talk about all different types of topics. I mean, I want to cover so many things that when people get to my site, if, it's, if they have a question, they can find it. And that is my ultimate goal. That's and awesome. so there's a lot that I want to do with it. I mean, I want to be able to Eventually, I'll get an actual website where I'll tie everything together. So they'll have links to my social pages, links to the videos. Um, I'd like to have uh, resources, you know, people who are doing X, Y, and Z. This is what, you, you know, these are the people and you can reach out to them. Um, books, you know, so I'd like to have that all put into one place. So that is my ultimate goal because, like I said, there were only a few sites out there that... I could get all the information that I needed, you know, and it was really a struggle to find it. I mean, there's just so much ADHD information out there yep. that people are sometimes taking pieces. And so I just wanted to have one place and that's what I'm hoping to, to give to the audience as a one-stop shop. So that's why 
when people, when I talk to people, I say, hey, if you do not see a topic on my, um, you know, in the videos, please let me know because I want to talk about as much as possible, right? So yeah, I think it's important. I, I think it's important. It is so important. You're bridging the gap. You're making it less clicks, yeah. <laughs> you know, stay in one place. People can, you know, find that, that home, that place where they can always depend upon, you know, having great information and from right. great reliable sources. That's amazing. I love it. So within that, it's, it's kind of, you're kind of like saying, go to my site, ADHD love, and then there'll be resources there, right? Um, what is right. the exact URL? So for, so, so I don't have a main website yet, but mm -hmm. you can get the videos either through ADHD love 2020 on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Um, you can also see the videos right now on Instagram uh -huh. and that is ADHD love 2020. I also post them on Facebook, ADHD love 2020, and I don't post them on Twitter. Um, Twitter's very brand new to me, but I, when I, put a video out, I try to link it through Twitter to the different locations. So that way you can reach Perfect. it that way too. So, um, and like I said, my ultimate goal is to have the, the site to bring it all together. I do also have a store, like a merchandise store, um, because I just want people to wear it and be proud and bring more awareness to ADHD and have the conversation by people seeing their shirts. Um, okay. And that is um, www.adhdlove. 2020.com. So there's the merchandise store too. So, um, so people can definitely check that out. And so that's it. But as far as resources, hey. I mean, I also, um, I want to mention one resource because, and, and people mention her com uh, commonly, and that is Jessica from How to ADHD. And I gained so much from watching her videos. It really helped me not only get to the point where I am in terms of law, um, some really good knowledge. Um, obviously, I research more outside of her site, of course. Yeah. Um, but I learned so much from that. But it also made me want to become an advocate too, because uh, I know she was doing it a lot from a single view. And I said, okay, there's this net or this niche of people that really need support, and I really want to be able to support them. And that's why I came up with ADHD Love. Love it. It's so awesome. The whole story is so inspiring. Um, so if people do have questions about what you're doing, the best way is to DM you. How do they get a hold of you? Exactly. They can DM me. Um, they can DM me at any one of those locations. Like I said, ADHD Love 2020, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and ADHD Love 2020 at gmail.com. So I try to keep it very simple <laughs> very <laughs> same across the board. So you can get me pretty much everywhere. I love it. Any other last comments or stories or insights you'd like to share with us before we close up? Um, just the last comment is, you know, so one of the things that somebody said to me and that I want to say to this audience is be kind to yourself as you're going through this process and don't beat yourself up as a parent as you're going through the process. Even if you did not have a child that had ADHD or any other type of diagnosis, sometimes parenting is difficult. And now you have the, the extra, right? And yeah. you are learning, you are growing. If you are looking at this video or you're looking at other videos or you're, you're reading or doing research or listening to podcasts, you are, I will say, um, you are a great parent. You are a person that is, you, you're caring, you love your child because you are trying to do the due diligence to support them in the direction that they need to go. So never beat yourself up. Um, continue to love yourself. Take self-care because I think that's also important. You need to reset. Yeah. It's very stressful journey. It can be a very stressful journey, right? Yeah. I mean, all parents know it can be a very stressful journey. So make sure that you take care of you. Find some time to reset. Even if you don't have the same setup as me, whether it's taking a walk around the block or if your children are really young and they're napping and taking that time for you, fine. Don't do stuff during that time. Yeah. <laughs> Take some time for you, even if it's just once a week. You do stuff the other days and then that one day a week, you just veg. Do that. It is so important because you got to reset and just be whole as you're dealing with the struggles on a daily basis. And remember, there are good times. Yes. Find those good times. Find those 
those days that they make you smile, find all of the good things about the ADHD perspective from your children. I mean, there are just so many wonderful things that can uplift you through those struggles. So find those good things about yourself and about your kids. So that's it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Round of applause. It's just amazing. I'm so there with you. Big like virtual hug to all those parents out there. You're exactly right. I always talk about that time is putting my slippers on. I'm just going to take some time to put on my slippers, you know, um, and to reset. Yakini, you're amazing. You, you are. <laughs> Thank you so much for letting me do this. I feel like it was my privilege and my like gift today to hear about your, your story and thank you for everything that you're doing. And I just am cheering you on. We're all cheering you on. And the, the huge vision that you have for this is going to happen. It is happening. And thank you for everything. And thank you for everyone else for tuning in um, with ADHD Love. <laughs> thank you so much, Camden. I truly appreciate this. So also, let me just close it up for everyone. If <laughs> you want more content like this, definitely do not forget to hit the subscribe button and hit that notification bell because every time a video like this comes out, you will be notified. And if you like this video, make sure you hit the like button. So thank you again, Camden. This was such a privilege. My pleasure. All right. Have a great day.